Hi everyone, it's Darren, and today I'd like to talk about the ECU-1 transmitter, but more importantly, I'd like to test it. The ECU-1 is a special transmitter that was included in the electronic set. The transmitter, along with the special receivers, is what set the electronic set apart from all the train sets that had been designed up until that point in time. It gave the operator the ability to control 10 different train related actions anywhere on the layout without the aid of the remote control section of track. Just the thought of that gives me the shivers. I really want to see an original electronic set operate. Somebody please make it happen. The ECU-1 is a vacuum tube to base transmitter that generates high frequency signals in the 200 kilohertz to 400 kilohertz ranges. These signals are then coupled to the track by two mutually inductive coils. These coils are arranged such that one coil is inside and parallel to the other coil. This results in a 3 volt sine wave that is superimposed upon the 60 Hz track power. This superimposed signal then propagates to the train cars where it's picked up by the electronic set receivers. For those of you keeping score at home, you may have noticed I said vacuum tube based transmitter. That's right. William Shockley, John Bardeen, and Walter Bretain didn't invent the transistor until 1947. And it really wasn't until 1954 when Texas Instruments began to commercially produce junction transistors. Alas, the electronic set was only available in the years 1946 through 1949. Now we could create our own modern day version of the ECU-1 complete with transistors and integrated circuits. However, in my mind, the ECU-1 is a 1940s piece of art. Even better yet, it's a functional piece of art, assuming it works. So the plan as of now is to use a stock ECU-1 with no modifications. Okay everyone, here we have the ECU-1 and its output is connected to the oscilloscope. What I plan to do is check the 10 transmitter channels. I plan to record both the RMS voltage and the frequency for each of the channels. Ideally, this will match the values seen in the repair manual. First, let's go ahead and just try the buttons and uh, see what happens. It looks like the first five buttons seem to have a signal the next five buttons, all of them seem to have a signal. Uh, it's not brain dead. This is a very good sign. Okay, let's uh, get the oscilloscope set up properly. The time base is not where we need it. Here we go. I think that looks like it will work well for us. Here's the high frequency output of the ECU-1. Um, let's go ahead and make measurements on these and see if it matches the uh, repair manual. Reading the oscilloscope is fairly straightforward. Think of the y-axis and the x-axis graticals as a ruler. For the y-axis, the large gradical division is 2 volts. For the x-axis, the large gradical division is 1 microsecond. Let's check button number 1. And it looks like the peak voltage is 1, 2, 2 point, I'm going to call it 2.3 divisions. And let's see what that calculates out to be. 2.3 divisions times 2 volts per division divided by the square root two and we get 3.3 volts uh, the repair manual says it should be around three volts um, I think actually it says button seven should be around three volts and um, we'll see what button seven says later but 3.3 volts that's good enough for me let's uh, move on to the uh, wavelength so we can figure out the frequency of this channel uh, let's let's uh, move the signal a little bit, make it a little easier to make the measurement. 
So starting from the center of the screen, we have one, two, almost three divisions. It looks like it's 2.8 divisions. So 2.8 divisions times, and we're at one microsecond per division. One microsecond. And this is the wavelength. What we want is the frequency, which is the inverse of the wavelength. And that gives us 357.1 kilohertz. And according to the manual, it should be 352.2 kilohertz. I'm going to call that good. Uh, this oscilloscope is not calibrated, so I'm going to take that any day of the week. That is not far off at all. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check the um, remaining channels. Looks like we're off to the races. Okay, now let's see if the ECU-1 works in tandem with the ZW transformer. Let me go ahead and hook up the ZW to the ECU. That's the common. Now the positive terminal. Uh, it looks like something is leaking through. I imagine if we zoom in on that signal, it will probably be 60 hertz signal. All right, let's um, let's go ahead and press. Uh, or let's turn on the ZW transformer. All right, now it's at its lowest setting. It should be around eight volts RMS. That's what the that's what the bottom of the ZW transformer voltage is. Uh, currently, we're set to five volts per division, and it's. Uh, one division, 1.24, 1 1.6 divisions. Uh, it looks like it's 5.7 volts. So my system currently is a little low. Okay, let's go ahead and hit one of the uh, buttons on the ECU-1. We should see a high frequency signal superimposed on the 60 hertz signal and so it should sort of look a little blurry let's see what happens uh, and there you go you can sort of see it looks a little blurry it's not triggered properly let's see if we can get it to trigger there we go I'm gonna move the position a little bit and move it back up and so the main underlying signal is at 60 hertz and on top of that uh, is a high frequency signal in the kilohertz range. And if we zoom in on the time scale, we might even be able to measure that frequency. I'm going to have to turn up the intensity here. Here you can see the signal. Um, let's keep moving out. And let's see if I can re-trigger it. That looks pretty good. And if we measure the frequency, I'm currently pushing down button number three, which should be around 289 kilohertz. Let's see what we get. I'm measuring one, two, three, 3.2, 3.4, I'm going to call it 3.5 divisions. So if I do 3.5 divisions times one microsecond, and if I take the inverse of that, I get 285.7 kilohertz. That's close enough for me. All right, it looks like everything is working as it should. The ECU-1 transmitter is outputting the correct voltage levels and signal frequencies. 
I'll include a list of my measurements in the text associated with this video. Most importantly, the ECU-1 and the ZW transformer are working together properly. This is one small step towards realizing the ultimate train set.